Good evening, commissioners. We're just giving Commissioner Pizer Mains a couple seconds to join us as she was having some Wi-Fi trouble, but she should be joining us momentarily and then we can get started. Okay, Chair Elman, it looks like we are all here today. Perfect. Well, I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, October 5th, Parks, Recreation, Community Resources Advisory Commission. And Nick, since this is your first night with us full time, can I ask you to lead us in the pledge? Um, yes, I would be honored to. Hold that up. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and, and justice for all. all. Thanks, Nick. Would you like to start roll call? All right. Chair Elman. Here. Vice Chair Horowitz? Here. Commissioner Lang? Present. Commissioner Moroni? Here. Commissioner Pizer Mains? Here. Uh, next, does anyone have any announcements? Okay. Well, I do. So, um, two announcements. Uh, one is a uh, volley, volley for sound will be uh, held this Sunday. I, I, I think we've talked about it a number of times. What a great uh, fundraiser uh, this will be. And it is, on, again, on Sunday uh, north of the pier from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I hope everyone can come down and at least watch and appreciate the message that they're trying to share with all of us. And second, uh, tomorrow morning is a coffee with a cop. So that's from 9 a.m. to 10.30 on Pier Plaza. Come on down, say hi to everyone. Thank you. Okay, so next, presentations. Okay, good evening, Chair, Chair Elman, Vice Chair Horowitz and commissioners. Tonight we have two presentations. The first presentation we have on our agenda tonight is the Fine Arts Festival post-event presentation and we have Jan Britton with us to present. Just as a reminder for the commission, events which are permitted through our long-term agreement program are required to provide both a pre and post event presentation at the commission level. So the Fine Arts Festival does hold a long-term agreement for 2021, 2022, and 2023 events. 
So this is their post-event presentation and we will go ahead and kick it off to you, Jan. Hello everyone, and commissioners and other guests. Uh, thank you for having us. Yes, uh, this was another year of an adventure uh, in a way that COVID worked in our favor rather than against us. As you many of you know, uh, the Art Walk Festival has been going on for over 25 years. Of course, we were dark last year because of COVID. This year was a totally, a totally a new event as far as um, date and collaboration, but it was still the same event. We moved it this year to uh, collaborate with the Fiesta as it was closed down so that we could pick up their fine artist. And basically, uh, WECO was very successful. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that we had now the shuttle dropping people off up by us and everyone walked through that had never been there before. We picked up many of the fine artists from the Fiesta, uh, plus we brought in some new people. And basically the artists all made their booth be the first day, uh, which was a record for us. Um, here is a picture of some of the booths. You can see the different art. We had all the way from uh, paintings that were $25 and down at the lower left, as you see the red, white, and blue stripe, red, green, orange stripe one, that artist sold one of his works for $10,000, um, as did the glass person sold for a very big amount. The um, middle one on the right, he I saw a lot of people walking out with that artist's work. So we were very excited, they were very happy. Uh, we don't know exactly how many of the Fiesta artists did show up. Basically, we had about 125 inquiries um, and then we ended up with about 64 booths. Uh, kind of what happened is uh, we did not accept any craft people. So we had to screen out a lot of people. We only did the fine artist. The ones from the Fiesta were very happy because they were not next to any crafts or any uh, wine salesman or clothing salesman. So they found it was a very a comfortable environment on that. Uh, we cleared about $3,000. Our expenses ran about $24,000. And once we paid our bills uh, from our income, we cleared about $3,000. We had a lot of donations. We had some Sharkies. Uh, uh, also from uh, Brian and Karen Nowicki and the Kiwanis are, were, I would say, our biggest donors on that. Um, the challenges we had with some of the artists from the Fiesta is that uh, they couldn't drive their trailer onto the grass and set up. So, you know, there were limitations that they would not have faced if they were on the street. And again, we screened out a lot of people that were more crafts. Uh, we did have, look at everyone ahead of time and uh, screen in quite a few. I think our challenges as far as costs were the water barricades. Uh, and again, I keep encouraging uh, the city consider putting those barricades up permanently and make them an art display because you use them not only for the youth, uh, but also for the Veterans Memorial. And uh, I noticed now that we have more youth activities on the grass and there's no bar barricades up there. Um, and maybe even pylons on the 11th street side. Uh, but that is a major expense that a lot of us have. Concern I know is storage, but if they were left up there and made an art project, I think um, that might be a win-win financially for everyone and uh, also provide security for these events coming up. Um, the only uh, suggestion we had is that maybe for the Fiesta, the crafts be along Pier Avenue on the businesses that were open, but we have purposely kept this a fine arts festival without the crafts. Um, I don't know if there's any questions that pretty much sums up uh, my part of the program. I'd like to thank Lisa and the staff. You've really helped us through some of our barriers here. Uh, it was very critical that we did have the restrooms open uh, and the building, you know, some different challenges. Uh, but thank you again for that. I, I only suggest, and also, sorry about my phone, that's my home phone. <laughs> um, my only suggestion is that um, we make sure calendars are not conflicting with the theater. 
Uh, we did have some issues there that somebody was going to use it, which restricted us, and then it turned out that it had been canceled. Uh, so, I mean, just, you know, those are minor things that happened during this, but basically it was wonderful having the support from the community center and all their help. So that's it for me, unless you have any questions. Uh, the next slide up, if you want to move it up, is a picture of the uh, layout. Uh, that's pretty standard. Uh, you can see where the water barricades were. We did get some shifting around as the glass guy moved over to where you see one, two, and three. Uh, the nice thing is we did have the flexibility because we have enough space to uh, space out. The other plus was that the um, Friends of the Library brought up their art books to give away, which attracted everyone down to them. Um, so that was kind of a plus too. So um, anyway, we found it was a very successful event. We do not know what's going to happen going further in the future. Uh, basically, we definitely are planning on having it next year. Whether we join with the Fiesta depends on their plan and what they plan to do. So that's my um, report. Do you have any questions for me? Does anyone have any questions for Janice? I do. Okay. I do. I'm sorry. I was unmuting. Jan, that was great. And I really enjoyed it. And I liked what you said about um, the shuttle stopping up there. If it was your choice, would you want to have it the same weekend as the Fiesta moving forward? Uh, we're totally flexible on it. We we don't mind that at all. Uh, you know, like I said, we, we still don't have quite an estimate of how many of the Fiesta artists did participate. Uh, we do bring in a lot of other artists from other places. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're fine with that if that works out, uh, if it's the same layout. In other words, the Fiesta does not have any fine artists. They do not do the street fair. Okay. Uh, and I could see it's partnering, but you know, uh, that all has to be ne negotiated going forward. Yeah, I was I was just curious about your preference, but I, I thought it was great. I think, I think it's a great idea. Uh, it really spreads people out through the city. And like I say, the artists were very happy being separated. Uh, it brings a new light to uh, the, the whole concept. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lauren. Yes, um, um, I also um, enjoyed it immensely this year. Um, as somebody who's been involved in this, um, this event in, the, in past years, I, I know about a number of the obstacles that are faced and I thought it really worked out beautifully this year uh, in terms of the synergy with, um, with the Fiesta. And I liked, um, and I know it's, de it's dependent on what they decide to do moving forward and what works best for the Fine Arts Festival. But I, um, I, I heard a lot of positive comments where people did like these types of different activation areas where the lawn was the fine arts area. And then you had other areas in town that were doing other things. So, you know, it, um, you, um, Jan, you're presenting a lot of great ideas for us to think about in terms of, you know, maybe there's other places where, you know, up and down pier, there can be more partnerships with businesses and some more crafts activated areas and um, to consider, you know, more permanent um, safety issues around the uh, perimeter, you know, not necessarily even uh, barricades, but maybe fencing or something like that. Uh, but it was really great. I'm glad to hear that the artists did um, did so well this year, and um, it looked much busier than it has in the past. So thank you so much for this uh, your report, and um, I'm glad to hear that it was a success. Success. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Right. <laughs> yes. Anyone else? Um, as everyone said, Jan, it was it, it was a, a great success. I thoroughly enjoyed myself and, and did also notice a lot more foot traffic and thought it was great that we were able to bring friends of the library out. The, the giveaways that they were trying uh, with their books were very, very popular. And I was glad to see it. Um, bleed down into the, the museum. Uh, I mean, everyone did really well, but I, I thought you guys uh, did a, a, an amazing job and I look forward to trying to figure out what um, you and the city can do to make next year just as creative and slightly different, but 
Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Glad to be here. Thank you. I'm staying on to hear the public works report. I will unmute. <laughs> Um, and then uh, our next presentation, Lisa. Yes, our second presentation this evening will be provided by the Public Works Director Joseph San Clemente and Deputy City, City Engineer Lucho Rodriguez, and it includes an update on the park restroom project, which includes the renovations uh, of the restrooms at Valley Park, South Park, Sea View Park, and Fort Lots of Fun. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to Joe now. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, good evening, Chair Elman and fellow commissioners. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, as Lisa mentioned, I'm here with our WC engineer, Lucha Rodriguez, and our project manager, Jonathan Pasquale. Um, you know, before I, I get started, um, I know that there have been some questions about the project, communications on the project, and, you know, this project certainly predates my time. <laughs> um, I've only been here a few weeks now, three, almost four, but I, I know it goes back to 2016 and, you know, I do know that staff has worked hard to reduce impacts where possible and to work with stakeholder groups throughout. Um, but I do know that there may have been some opportunities where the process could have been better. Um, so, you know, working with our city manager, our staff is committed to working with the community and all the involved parties through the process and all of our capital projects. So, you know, moving forward, we are, we're happy to further include the commission um, where we can. Um, and, you know, with that said, I don't know, for those that might be unfamiliar with the project, um, you know, this is our capital improvement project number 669, City Park Restrooms. Um, it is intended to improve restrooms at four of our parks. Um, it will renovate an existing restroom and build a new restroom facility at South Park, and then construct new restrooms at Clark Field, Four Lots of Fun, and Seaview Parkette. Um, the project is under construction, we're excited that we're underway. Um, construction started on September 20th of this year. Um, the duration is 180 working days, so roughly about eight months or so. Um, but and we should be hopefully complete by, you know, I guess spring summer of next year. Um, the in terms of construction, um, the intent is that all parks will remain open. Um, we have the work zones worked off for the work. Um, right now, all the construction fencing is up at all four sites. Um, there could be certain times throughout the process where those work zones do have to get intermittently expanded to accommodate certain um, targeted limited activities that might have to happen to keep construction going. But for the most part, those construction zones are fairly set uh, for the duration. Um, temporary bathrooms have been provided at the two parks that, where there were bathrooms, Clark Field and South Park. And then there is an additional um, uh, temporary uh, bathroom uh, for the school district up at the upper level at South Park. So right now, um, construction is getting started and the intent is that construction will be ongoing at all four sites, but the, the activities themselves will be sequential. Um, so activities began, uh, even though fencing is up at all. I was getting some interruption, pardon me. So even though that the fencing is up at all the sites, um, the excavation began at Clark Field over this past week or so. Um, the contractor will be uh, working on pouring the footings for the foundations over the next several weeks. Um, and that work is gonna be followed by South Park where some of the excavation and grading work uh, did start in this past week, and that will also be followed by footings um, once they're complete at our Clark Field. But they will try to get activities concurrently as much as they can. But as each trade comes in, whether it's the concrete work or the framing or the electrical or the plumbing and so on, they will work sequentially through the sites. So starting at Clark to South Park and then moving towards Seaview in Fort Lots of Fun. Um, one thing that I, I did want to bring up tonight is that um, there are five eucalyptus trees at Clark Field that are located along the northern section of the park. Um, they are located within a raised planter um, next to a retaining wall. It was always our intent that these five eucalyptus trees were going to be retained throughout the project. Um, while we were doing excavation work, the contractor did experience more roots than were, were anticipated once we're able to break through the asphalt surface in that parking lot. Um, the roots 
were going to be in direct conflict with the new foundation and they did need to be removed so that we didn't cause um, un unnecessary delay to the contractor and they could continue performing the work for the excavation. Um, you know, we, we did consult with an arborist um, and these trees, they are big trees in a very narrow planter. Um, one of the trees is in poor health, it's dying. It's the easternmost tree. If you go out there today, you'll notice that there's really not a lot of foliage on it. It does have insects and disease. Um, and that tree um, really was not in good condition before construction started. But all four of, um, of all five of these trees rather have experienced some trunk and root expansion, which have contributed to cracks in the bathroom structure. There's cracks in the retaining wall and the planter bed. Um, and all these would end up requiring further repair and maintenance over time. Um, we did see that there was damage from the tree roots. Um, once we did conduct some um, excavation near the existing bathroom facility where the roots were um, infiltrating the electrical conduits and the sore lateral. Um, I know that over time there has been quite a bit of issue with the sore uh, working um, and really keeping um, that facility running. Um, and then we've also gotten some complaints over the year about what from one of the direct neighbors about sap and falling branches out there. So at this time, we do intend to remove the five eucalyptus trees. Um, uh, and we are uh, going to recommend replacing them on a two to one ratio in the park. Uh, we did work with arborists to go through the city's approved tree list to find a species that is a little bit smaller and more suitable for that planter bed um, that would work well. So we're evaluating how many we can fit in that planter. We, we think we might be able to fit all the two to one replacement in there, uh, but we're gonna continue to evaluate um, which trees we're gonna select and what the placement might be and try to fit as many in there as we can. Um, so with that, um, we're happy to answer any questions. So does anyone have any questions? Okay, I'll get started with my oh, questions. Okay. I'll go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Tracy. Oh, thanks, Joe, for the for the information. Um, I have a couple questions. It was brought to our attention um, through a, a local resident, and I think Commissioner Elman sent an email as well regarding the bathrooms for the staff at South Park, and whether there's a way to make those a little less um, Andy Gump and a little more. Um, I don't want to say luxurious because it's a temporary bathroom, but they're going to be using it for six months. Um, we all know that outhouses aren't the most pleasant. And if there's any plan to accommodate the people who are there every day. Um, sure. So I know that was a question that, that Chair Elman might have gotten to. Um, as for the trees, I understand the tree removal because of roots and um, tree health. I don't know that contractor timeline is the best motivation to take down a tree, but I appreciate you explaining the limitations I've, I've experienced um, having to take out trees at my own house because of foundation issues. And so I understand that. Um, so I appreciate the, the more detailed explanation about removing the trees and not just because it's a contractor timeline. Um, and then on a totally other topic, we got an email today that you started the reseeding at South Park. And I don't know that the email said how long that would take. And then I wondered what the timeline was for Valley Park, if you were going to be doing any reseeding over there. Yeah, that I, was a lot. I realized yeah, that, that. A... <laughs> all at once. Yeah, um, yeah, so I think the first one was the bathroom of the school district. So our team is working directly with the school district staff, and we are working with them to ensure that all their needs are met for the bathroom. They do have a separate bathroom. It's locked, um, but we have been in communication with the district um, throughout okay. the project. Um, the, the trees, I think, you know, we you know, never want to cut down any trees. And you know, like I said, our intent was to retain them while they were there. But I think for the reasons that I did mention, I think that we did have to make some decisions while we're out there. And we definitely encountered a lot more roots underground and even infiltrating into the existing building than we anticipated. But 
it does come down to the suitability of those trees in that raised planter bed and you know what other issues we're going to have down the road for you know maintaining that retaining wall in the planter bed and really I think choosing a more appropriate species for what might do better there in the long term and not cause long-term maintenance needs. Um, so I think the last question was the receding. Um, I would have to find out more and if you could repeat it again, but at South Park, I do believe it did start today or it's going to be this week. Um, you're asking about duration? Yeah, duration. And then if there's a plan to reseed at Valley. And I know that Valley Park, we are looking at Valley Park and we have gotten some comments in about some browning sections. So um, we are looking at it and we're working with our contract to evaluate when that can be scheduled in. Um, I can't answer the duration question. I would have to find out and follow up on that. Okay, thanks. Oh, do you know the species of tree that you picked to replace the eucalyptus at if, Parkfield? If you could bear with me, I, I do have it written down. Um, there were three different varieties, I think, that would potentially um, be more suitable for that location. I'm just trying to uh, pull it up. Um, and actually, um, while you pull that up, Joe, um, I can share the information on the reseeding for South Park. Oh, thank you, Lisa. So, Appreciate it. Of course. So that actually is going to take place from today through um, its scheduled reopening on Thursday, October 28th. Thanks, Lisa. And Public Works did post signs of this expected closure at South Park today. Okay. And uh, I can look up um, Valley Park's information for you as well. <clears throat> And to add to that, uh, next seeding at Valley Park is for the month of December. That's December. when we're gonna we're gonna do the other park. Okay. Thanks, Lucha. Thank you. So, and and there's a uh, for the replacement trees a uh, new uh, New Zealand. Christmas tree is one of the options. It provides these red uh, flowers. And the other one is, escapes me right now as well, but okay. they are from the approved tree list and the, the um, arborists went in detail through all the trees there and found ones with the least intrusive root system uh, because in reality, that's a planter, right. uh, and and I don't think it initially was was uh, thought to be a, a a big tree planter, right? It's just really to have some other kinds of of, of plants. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, we um, we have a good plan for for the trees, and we will find maybe by the end of. Of the meeting, we'll find the the other proposed. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, no, thank you, Lucha. And I do have it here. So it was the New Zealand Christmas tree. The other one was the Melaleuca, and the third one was the Brisbane box. And those were all in our approved uh, tree list. Uh, and does it make sense uh, since we are here with the park commission does it make sense to plant them all the same or would you like to see variety you, you know lucho i would have to jump in here i do apologize um while this you know update has been has been phenomenal we, we appreciate it it is just presented as a as a presentation so should that you know i i i, I would feel uncomfortable with the commission Kind of you know deliberating on that and 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 making a formal recommendation. I don't plan I'm to sorry. do that. <laughs> Got it. I, I, I withdraw my question, Patrick. <laughs> Good thing you stopped me, Patrick. <laughs> uh, so, so, does fun. anyone else have any questions? No, thank you, Joe and Lucho. Okay, so let me ask my questions. Which, um, first of all couldn't be happier to have a presentation from Public Works, which we we'll might be addressing later in the evening, but this is exactly what, uh, at least I was hoping as a commissioner that we could do this more often so we could hear and be part of the discussion of what's going on, how, when, where. So my, uh, my comments ab about the presentation regarding the parks is, um, 
one at Valley Park, I'm hoping we can do a, a better job of looking at timelines, such as this morning we had um, a truck deliver the um, chain link fencing for the closer, the closing of the middle of the park at 6 a.m. with um, a need to drive the truck backwards down a winding driveway. And so it just, I don't think that was necessary. And I think it was a, a miscommunication. So I'm hoping that we can look at that constantly with a project of this size, because I'm going to assume that we're going, we have Seaview Park and um, Fort Lots of Fun that are surrounded by homes. And also I, I, I've already made this comment once to the city, but we already have a huge construction project going on next to Seaview Park, which is um, the, uh, the new school. So I'm hoping that we can look at that as a way for all of us to communicate timelines and issues. Issues are gonna come. I find that most time when people know there's gonna be an issue, the, uh, the water's gonna be turned off, the electricity's gonna be turned off, that we do this in more than just 24 hours. And um, so that's my first comment uh, about communicating. The next one is about the bathrooms that uh, we're requiring people to use. And Tracy, the, um, the city did, um, or the builder, I'm not sure who, changed the bathroom that the school is using. Oh, okay. It's still disappointing to me, but it is better than what they were offered before. And um, I, I did go down and um, check that out. The, the issue that I think we're running into right now with the bathrooms are that we do have um, young school children that are using the bathrooms down at, on the east side of the, of the park, and they were unacceptable today. I was down there at um, 11 o'clock in the morning, and they had not been cleaned. So they made it through um, the, the weekend and Monday. Monday, they were, they were filthy. And then this morning, there was still an issue. And again, we have these young kids where teachers have to go with them and there was no toilet paper. So I, I'm, if that were me, I would probably, if I know I'm gonna be doing this, I'll be bringing my own toilet paper. But I, I'm just saying, there's a, we have to have a checklist. And I think that's a really important one since this is open to the public. Um, the next issue of communicating is the fact that we, was it necessary for us to do this seating at this time? Since we already have two parks, Seaview Park and Fort Lots of Fun, that have very minimal amount of green space, and now they have basically none. We've taken a huge amount of green space from the residents by reseeding the park when we are. Was it necessary to do that now? That would be one of my questions. You brought the question, you brought the comment up that we're going to be doing this in December. So have we thought about, is there a check sheet for that? We, do we have sports going on in December? What, are we able to move them? Are we doing it in two, two segments? Um, and again, these are all questions that I would be asking and I'm sure others would be asking if we could consistently have more of a communication between public works and parks and rec since we know there is a crossover of the two groups, such as trees. What is our tree policy? What types of trees do we want to plant? So um, those are the beginnings of my comments about what we're trying to do. Uh, I, I'm all in on trying to get this done in a timely fashion, but I'm hoping that we have weekly meetings that the city and the contractor does so that we know what's going on on Friday because the city is closed, basically closed on Fridays. Um, and those, again, the bathrooms need to be kept up as well as um, my last comment is the trash pickup. We've, um, we're, uh, Edith Roadaway Park is now busier than it's been in the past as far as I'm concerned. So the bathroom, the um, trash cans were overflowing on Mon uh, not this Monday, last Monday, uh, every Monday, the, the trash cans are just full at all of our parks. So the question is, can we get uh, a trash pickup on Sundays? because you've got soccer, you've got 
parties, then then you've got regular use. And I just don't think we either have enough trash cans or we're um, picking them up uh, enough. So I think at this time regarding this uh, part of the parks issue, I'm my questions have been asked. Thank you. Patrick, question. Is there, uh, do we answer the questions? Is that okay as part of this or? Sure, yeah, I mean, nothing that, you know, once again, this is, a, as I kind of echoed earlier, this is just a, a presentation. This isn't an, an action item um, whatsoever. This is, you know, Chair Elman's questions and Chair Elman, you, you, you know, you can stop me if I'm, if I'm uh, putting words in your mouth. Are, are her own. This is not necessarily, you know, any any directive of the of the commission. Oh, not um, at all. Correct. Yeah, I was I was I was attempting to jot down the, the, the questions before. I mean, to, to the extent you guys have them right now and and, and, and and can answer them, I think that would be fine. Um, to the extent that you know you, you you don't, I believe we we would all agree that we can likely get those those answers and, and, and follow up. But once again, I don't want to put sure. uh, words into your mouth, Lucho, or or you, Mr. San Clemente. Okay, perfect. I, I, I have a, um, uh, a couple of answers that, that uh, I, we could share. Uh, one, one is important regarding the, the receding. Uh, receding is, is worked around the sports uh, calendar. And that's what we're doing in December. It's after at Valley Park. It's after the sports that are taking place there. Uh, then we follow up with receding. And likewise, at, at, um, at South Park, it was uh, waiting into the, I believe, AY, uh, AYSO is the one that's playing at Ballet Park right now. But at South Park, uh, there was also considered the calendar, and we moved on. There's no sports plans. Um, just a little bit of information about the reason for receiving the parks is we can okay. we we can let them go a little longer, but then ends up being a dry um, lawn, and it turns yellow. And we already went through that problem in the past, so we're catching up with with uh, the maintenance, I would say, and the, and the process of keeping uh, uh, the lawn nice and green and, and useful. Otherwise, we, we are just, just uh, not doing what we're supposed to be doing. But with uh, a, a little bit of construction, and I'm sorry to hear that there was a delivery at 6 a.m. of fencing and and we strive, and I say that with an accent on the whatever letter it goes, that um, our contractor knows, and we're monitoring it daily, it's an eight to five uh, project. So there should be no activities whatsoever before 8 a.m. And for Friday, because it's an excellent point, uh, uh, Barbara, the the Friday work, we have a team of, of inspector and construction manager on Fridays as well in the uh, full-time monitoring the co construction. Uh, therefore, we, we are confident that, that we're watching closely what's going on. Um, the fencing, by the way, was due to the receding, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and and we have to remind the contractors that come in only once in a while uh, to do that, even though we we write in there they deliveries after such time. Occasionally one one of the contractors don't listen and we we have these issues, but but we do try carefully to to maintain uh, the problems to a minimum, right? And, and the inconveniences to park owners and, and the public in general. Uh, those are the only answers I have of the, uh, for, for the list uh, of, of 
questions you have, but we can always answer later if uh, we do. Oh, one more thing. I'm so sorry. Yes, maintenance of the of the temporary restrooms. We are maintaining them three three days a week as a as a test, and obviously we do need to uh, scale it up to one more probably. Uh, Monday, we do them Friday, Monday, and Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. But we are going to monitor the, making sure these supplies are, are always available. And, and that's something that we are going to talk to the, uh, to the supplier of the restrooms to make sure we have additional available. Thank you, Lisa. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, well, again, I'm hoping that pu Public Works uh, will be back many times. Thank well, you, Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Lucho. And thank you, Jonathan, for joining us tonight. And um, I did want to second what Lucho had said about the yearly seating times being built around the permitted recreational activities at each location. Location That schedule has definitely been created based on, on those permitted recreational activities at each park. And um, we will be working with the public works team to get a more firm timeline on all of those reseeding times and advance notice will definitely be given to the commission on those reseedings as they come up at the um, different points throughout the year. Lisa, where are we going now? We're going to your COVID update. Okay. Thank you, Chair Elman. I wanted to provide an update that the city of Hermosa Beach is um, in partnership with the Beach Cities Health District, hosting a community COVID-19 Pfizer booster shot clinic on Tuesday, October 12th from 1 to 4 p.m. for LA residents who received the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine at least six months ago and are at least 65 years or older or residents of long-term care facilities or those between 18 to 64 years of age with underlying medical conditions or those between 18 to 64 years of age with high institutional or occupational risk positions, including healthcare workers, first responders, teachers, daycare staff, grocery workers, and workers in homeless shelters or prisons. The clinic will be held in the community center gym. All these details that I've just outlined and um, the registration for this clinic is available at myturn.ca.gov. And that includes my COVID update for this evening. Um, the other matters in this section are the 2021 special events calendar, which we have just included for your reference this evening, and the updates regarding the items that were previously on the commission's agenda. And I wanted to sum up that report and share that the naming policy did go to city council on September 28th and it was approved. And the Hermosa Harmony, I'm sorry, the um, Hermosa Holidays event by the Chamber of Commerce that you had seen at your last meeting as a public hearing will be going before City Council on October 12th as a public hearing for review and their approval. And that includes my updates for this section. Nice job. Uh, okay, so then we're going to move on to um, public comment. So, Lisa, I'm going to ask you, because I left something downstairs, if you would read the public comment portion of our meeting. I'm going of to course. Put you the spot. Of course. Hold on just a second while I bring that up. There's some new verbiage. Sorry about that, everyone. I left Lisa hanging. It's okay, I have it here. Okay, I will go ahead and read that information now and we can open it up for 
public comment after I conclude here. Although the Parks and Recreation and Community Resources Advisory Commission values your comments, the Brown Act generally prohibits the commission from acting on any matter not listed on the posted agenda as a business item. This is a time for members of the public to address the commission on any items within the commission's jur jurisdiction, not on this agenda or items on this agenda. Please note that the commission does not engage in a dialogue during public comment and each speaker is limited to three minutes. If you are joining the meeting by phone, please remember to dial star nine to raise your virtual hand and star six in order to unmute yourself. Participants joining by interest, please remember to unmute before, I'm sorry, by internet, please remember to unmute before starting your comment. We ask all speakers, please state your full name and city of residence for the record. And I did want to share that we actually do have someone in the council chambers tonight to provide public comment. So we would like to invite them to speak at this time as they've been added to the speakers list first. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Um, I wanted to speak briefly about what's happening at Valley Park. Um, I surveyed the park today and there were over 25 barren spots, not even including the athletic field, that were between 400 and 3,000 square feet. Now, I don't know what is causing this, but I'm at the park every day. A lot of pay to play activity. There's a lot of uh, coaching activity and whatnot. The problem is that the aesthetic quality of the park is being substantially degraded. Um, it, it, like I said, there's at least 25 barren spots, and most of them are in the 1,000-square-foot range. Now, I don't know if the, you know, if you're taking the athletic field basically down to dirt with the activity uh, that, that's being used on that, and these other places are taken down to dirt. So is the city's plan to resod those areas and, and fence them off until, or um, until they, um, uh, the, the sod can take? Because if you try to reseed it from grass, you know, from, from dirt and, and reseed it, then it's going to be six, eight months before or longer before that area can be in a high usage area. Um, so what is your plan to protect the aesthetic quality of the park? It's just, it's, it's going to hell in a handbasket. It's, you know, the, the, the bald spots are everywhere. And if the solution is that you're going to fence off the athletic field for six months, and fence off these 25 other areas, maybe for three months, because um, that's not going to work. That, you know, that, that's crazy. So I'm hoping you have the budget, you've taken a look at the problem, and you have the budget to resod these areas and so they don't have to be fenced off forever. And that's... Um, uh, that's what I would like you to consider. And I'd like you to consider the usage policies that are, are um, uh, driving what I believe is the overuse of the park. I brought, by the way, much of what you think is green on the park is not green, or it's not grass, it's weeds. Now, I wish you were here so I could pass them around, but it's weeds. And... That's that. Thank you for accommodating me. I appreciate it. Lisa, do we have anyone waiting with their hand up? 
Just a reminder for those who are on the line tonight joining us via Zoom or by phone, if you would like to speak during public comment at this time, please hit star nine to raise your virtual hand or unmute yourself at this time by unmuting via Zoom or hitting star six to unmute yourself if you've called in. It doesn't look like we have any additional pu public comment at this time. Okay, then I'm going to close this off to public comment and we will move on to correspondence. I did want to note that we actually did receive correspondence today before the deadline from Brian Zerbel, which was added to the agenda this afternoon and emailed to the commission. So I wanted to make note of that for the record. Well, and I had a chance to read Mr. Zerbel's uh, email and it's always nice to get someone that's calling up to say thank you and he seems to be forever grateful for the help regarding the trees so yay so um we want to receive and file Pat do we need a motion to receive and file the correspondence we do not know okay thank you thank you so now I'll go on to the consent calendar and um Lisa, I think you had something you wanted to say. Yes, we wanted to take this time to provide more detail on an item that is on your consent calendar each month, and that is our department activity reports. We um, provide these reports to provide the commission a snapshot of all the items related to the department every single month. So it includes a list of all our departments hosted so special events or activities, our permitted special events, our contracted classes, our outdoor fitness permits, our field users, our theater bookings, our film permits. It's really a comprehensive list of everything that the, de the department was involved in for that month that's noted. So we really hope that this will um, be a helpful document moving forward for the commission and we welcome any questions or comments you may have um, on this document as well. So does anyone have any questions or comments? Oh, Lauren? Yes, um, I just want to thank staff for that report. I've always found it very helpful. So thank you for continuing to provide it. It's um, very helpful to see these um, to get an overview as far as how facilities are being used and um, um, what groups, uh, what the mix of groups are and how we're doing with everything. And um, congratulations on a successful summer program that was pretty much sold out. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tom. Yes, uh, I just have a quick question, Lisa. What's the division between outdoor fitness permit tier one versus tier two? That's a great question. I would actually like to invite Nick to speak on that. He actually oversees our outdoor fitness permit program. So he would be the best to speak on that. Uh, that is me. So uh, could you repeat that question one more time for me, Commissioner Maroney? What makes a fitness permit tier one as opposed to tier two? What's the difference? Sure. So tier two is actually a program that we brought um, during COVID to help our brick and mortar businesses. It offers uh, more participants. It allows more hours per week. Um, and it really was just to aid them during uh, COVID when a lot of their storefronts were being um, shut down and businesses uh, were closed. So it was our way of getting them outside, much like uh, the restaurant seating outside that we see today. So the big difference is you have to be a brick and mortar fitness based business within Hermosa Beach um, to obtain a tier two permit. And the maximum number of people can part more people can participate under tier two. Yes, so tier two allows up to 24 participants and about the same amount of hours per week while tier one is nine participants and six hours per week. All right, thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Um, we're going in the consent calendar. We, we didn't we, we didn't discuss um, the other two. Correct. Okay. Yes. And, okay. okay. Sorry. Um, I, I, I apologize, Chairman. I didn't mean to interrupt unless Lisa no. that that was a little bit of a 
a, a different approach to the consent calendar. Once again, it was new. Lisa wanted to give everyone kind of a, a snapshot. Typically, well, what we would do, unless, of course, if a single commissioner has any questions or anything, we would pull one of those off the consent calendar, give a form, a, a more full detailed um, report of it. So as of right now, if any, this this would be the time for uh, to give it to the commission. Any commissioner wants to pull, if not, maybe look for a motion to approve the consent calendar. Yes, Tom. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to pull item B, which is the agenda, the minutes from the last meeting for one reason. Perfect. Okay. And, okay. The, and the reason I have is, I think we should set this future meeting. When we met on the 20th, we approved the placement of one bench and we said at some future date, we're gonna consider the guidance that Public Works has asked for with respect to the benches on the green belt. And you know, we shouldn't lose that idea. We should provide that guidance and we should set a meeting to do that, which I would guess would be sometime next year. But I think we should set that meeting. So at that point then, um, if, he, if we pull that, Patrick. Yes, yeah, yeah. So 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 I say so 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 item B is now pulled and, and we can and I guess we can give Commissioner Maroney another time. I think he's succinctly and adequately addressed his his uh his, his issues with it, so to speak. But so as of right now, what is left to approve on the consent calendar are items A, C, and D. Um and and, and that's kind of what's before the, the the commission right now. After that, we will of course get to item nine B with uh with Commissioner Maroney's comments. Okay, so would someone like to move to accept the consent calendar A, uh, B, I'm sorry, A, C, and, and D? I'll make a yeah. motion. Oh, go ahead. Thank you, honey. I'll make a motion to approve items A, C, and D for this evening's consent calendar. I'll second. Second. Tracy. Uh, Lisa, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so used to calling on, on Lisa, Nick. I apologize. It's not a problem. I'm learning as myself right now. Um, so we'll do a roll call. Chair Elman? Yes. Vice Chair Horowitz? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Commissioner Maroney? Yes. And Commissioner Pizer Mays? Aye. Perfect. And, and so now that we're at item, the pulled consent calendar item, item 9B, um, and Commissioner Maroney, I, I of course, will, will, will give you back the floor. I understand you, your concerns. But was this something that you felt, because typically the, the, this approval of the minutes is meant to reflect what the action was by the commission at the previous, at the previous meeting. Um, off the top of my head, even though I, I did cover it, I can't specifically recall if the if the commission specifically listed a date. So if you feel that we did and we missed that date, then I think you can make a, you know, we, we can bring these minutes, minutes back as, as amended. Um, if not, once again, this was still the appropriate time to pull it. This is still a good time for you to raise this issue and say, hey, we, should, we shouldn't forget this. Um, but once again, what, what the issue here is rather is basically just whether or not these minutes accurately reflect what happened during that September 20th, 21 meeting, if that makes sense. Yes, it makes perfect sense. It accurately reflects the meeting. I'm just pushing us a little further that we we set the date that we didn't at the last meeting. Perfect, got it. So once again, with that, you know, clearly noted, um, the 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 issue or or the, the sole remaining item before the commission as pertains to the consent calendar is whether or not to approve those minutes. All right. Well, then I, I would move to approve item. B, and at some point during this meeting, I think we should set a time for a future meeting. So is that something I'm going to assume that we would do that at the end of the meeting during other matters? Co correct. Yeah, I mean, once again, it's, it's, it, was, it, it was totally fine for Commissioner Roney to bring this up as it flows directly right from those minutes. I'm sure he was reading them for accuracy and said, hey, I've noticed this. Let's, let's make sure we, we stay on top of this. Um, but so yeah, the, the, the motion right now is to is to approve those minutes, and then Commissioner Maroney, if if the, if the commission would, would like to give staff direction on the specific date on which they want to hear that, that would likely be, be done under yeah other matters or items requested for commissioners. Okay. So would anyone like to 
uh, approve uh, the consent calendar B. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve item B. And a second? I'll second. Thank you. Nick, you wanna call the vote? Chair Elman? Yes. Vice Chair Horowitz? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Commissioner Maroney? Yes. And Commissioner Pfizer Mays? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, moving on to items removed from the consent calendar. We don't have any. Uh, public hearings, we don't have any. So we're going to move on to item 12, which is matters for the commission's uh, consideration. Lisa. Thank you, Chair Elman. Our first matter for commission consideration tonight is the consideration of a, of a resident request to relocate the beach tennis courts to an area closer to the pier. The city currently has a total of six beach tennis courts located on the north side of the beach, just south of 15th Street within the city's commercial zone, which runs between 10th Street and 15th Street on the beach. In May of 2020, staff received a request from a resident living at 15th Street in the Strand to move the beach tennis courts closer to the pier due to noise concerns from the courts. As a, re as a result, commission requested staff to return with a more formal discussion to consider this request, which staff did at the September commission meeting with options for reloading, I'm sorry, the September 2020 commission meeting with options for relocating the beach tennis courts closer to the pier. The commission motioned to delay any discussion on this matter to a date 90 days following the removal of COVID-19 regulations on the beach effective June 15th, I'm sorry, effective June 15th, California removed many COVID-19 regulations on the beach, allowing for full recreational use of the beach. The 90 day period following the lift of these regulations ended on September 13th, 2021. Therefore, staff is returning tonight with this resident request to see if commission would like to consider it formally and to provide staff with further um, information on the desired level of analysis, including court usage data, policy option, et cetera, that they would like to staff to return at a future meeting with for future discuss discussions if the commission wishes to further pursue this request. We have received 29 supplemental letters on this matter, which were added to the public agenda this afternoon and shared with the commission. Additionally, we would like to note that since California's reopening on June 15th, which allowed for the full recreational use of the beach, Staff has received three noise complaints from those living near 15th Street related to usage of the beach tennis courts. Staff did provide an update to the West Coast Ten Beach Tennis Association of this agenda item tonight and the resident who directly requested the relocation of the courts. This does conclude my staff report, but please let me know if you have any other questions. Great, all right. So why don't we open this up to the, to the um, Commission, does anyone have any questions before I open this up for public comment? Yes, Yanni. Do we have um, a date of those three complaints and hours pertaining to the uh, the complaints? Basically, I'm getting at, was it on a weekend? Was it on a Monday? I just so I unfortunately would have to do some more research on that information as Kelly actually was the one who had received the complaints are our former um, community resources manager. So I would have to do um, some more analysis on that and get back to you. And I can include that information um, at a future meeting as well, if that was part of the commission's recommendation. Thank you. I just wanted to jump on, continue that thought because I was thinking the same thing. I was wondering if those complaints were, um, if they were coupled with um, one of the beach tennis tournaments, so it wasn't, so there was more use than there normally is. So it would be um, interesting to know um, when, you know, uh, when those um, complaints took place and um, where the residents were located and were they three um, separate individual, you know, complaints were, would be some of my questions. Okay, anyone else? Okay, um, I kind of had the same question, so I'm, I'm gonna hold off 
and wait until we've heard from the public. Uh, and again, Lisa, do you, could you read, remind everyone about the three minutes? And um, yes, that everyone does, will be able to speak uh, and they get three minutes and remind them about raising their virtual hand. Yes. Um, I'm actually gonna hand it over to Nick so that he can. Gotta practice. Okay, as a reminder, if you'd like to make a public comment tonight and you're calling by phone, press star nine to raise your virtual hand and star six to unmute your line when asked to do so. And as Chair Elman just noted, comments from the public are limited to three minutes per speaker. Chair Elman, we do actually have three on our speakers list. So um, if that is okay, I would like to invite them up to speak first. Yeah, go ahead. you can go ahead and do so, Nick. Thank you. Okay, so first up we have, um, did I say the name? Donnie Young has, mm -hmm. is on our speakers list today. And I believe I saw, so I guess Donnie Young, if you're on the line, you would unmute yourself at this time. And, and, and Mr. Young, uh, I, yeah. I apologize. So, so Mr. Young, give me one second. I just wanna make sure that we, I noticed that there could have been some issues in the chat um, asking how to speak on, on Zoom. Um, well, uh, you know, our, our staff will, will, will address those. And I just want everyone to, to be sure that, that we will allow maximum public comment here. So if there's any trouble at the beginning, if there's any issues, don't worry. We will, we will exhaust all possible technical resources to ensure that, that you're, you're able to comment. And with that, Mr. Young, I, I apologize for the interruption. The floor is yours. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I think you can hear me. Yes. Okay. So I, first of all, um, uh, my, my question is, is I, I started these kind of 12 years ago with you know, three or four guys. We put a net in, uh, uh, a little net in, and we started. And next thing you know, it's grown into thousands of people enjoying the sport in our community. And my question is, why are we going through this again? Uh, you know, we went through the normal process with Kelly, and then we went through the rec commission. Uh, we, they were sent out public notices to everybody, and we went through the city council and we had this approved. This was 12 years ago that we went through this process. So my question, I have like four questions, and that's my first question. Uh, what what is it? Well, to finish that last statement is why does that mean anything to go through a process? I I just really don't feel that way. At, you know, leading the beach tennis, it feels like that we're just there's always something about beach tennis. Okay, so the second thing is um, we went through a sound study already. Why doesn't that matter? That's my next question. We went through a sound study already, and now it doesn't matter. Thirdly, if I'm reading this right, the ordinance section 8.24.030, which means the definition of nuisance does not come down to subjective opinion of a single individual. That means one individual can create this whole problem, this whole chaos. That means I have to point at our rec commission for not looking at this correctly. We never should have had this conversation. One individual complained at the beginning in September and never even came up and spoke about it. So if you really follow the ordinance, we shouldn't be having this conversation, one individual. And we've gone through so much stuff to get through. We've gone through tons of people signing up, all these things. And uh, it's, it's disturbing to all of us, a lot of these people that we're leading for, we're talking for. And fourth, We've been established for a long time, for 12 years. We've created millions of dollars for the city. 
we've introduced it to thousands of people to a community we created a community that never existed before why are we going through this again is my question these are my four questions thank you very much thank you Okay, um, I believe moving on on our speakers list, we have Gary Rhodes on our list. Mr. Rhodes, if you're on the line, just as a reminder, if you're calling in, star nine to raise your virtual hand and star six to unmute yourself. So can you hear me? Because I think I unmuted my. We can hear? hear you. Okay, hi. So uh, thanks for... Uh, the uh, work that all of you do on on uh, the commission to support us residents in Hermosa Beach. Uh, the, I think following up on what Donnie said, I mean, one of the things that I took a look at, it appears that all the comments, uh, all the letters that are written in are all in support of tennis. Is there actually anybody here to speak on behalf of the complaint to move the courts? Um, right, right now you're here to give us your opinion and ask your questions. So my question to you is, if there's nobody that's written in to support moving the courts, and if there's nobody here to support moving the courts, I would hope that you uh, take into account all the letters that have been written and uh, the fact that, as Donnie mentioned, Previous sound studies have not found any problems. And, you know, if you take a look at, you know, there's a person that has pickleball on there on the strand, or you look at all the beach volleyball, um, I don't think there's an issue with beach tennis having any greater noise than any of those sports. It's it's right across from the park. Um, the, the um, I'm actually one apartment complex behind the one that potentially made the complaint. And I don't, I have a, a balcony that's facing the park and the courts. Haven't really found it to be a, a, any problem. That complex actually went through a major remodel. If that's the case, did they actually see that the noise was such a problem that they redid the windows and uh, reduced noise? from all aspects, whether it's people walking on the strand or playing beach tennis or beach volleyball. Um, I just think that, you know, as you can see in all the letters that were written in, there's a lot of support for beach tennis at the spot that it's in now. I think we've done a lot to provide feedback uh, to the commission to support the idea that we would like it to stay where it is. And we hope that in your review this time, you provide feedback so that hopefully you support a continuation of beach tennis in the courts where it is. And uh, as Donnie mentioned that whatever you can do to avoid this happening on a regular basis based on one potential person's complaint. I know you said there were three, but you didn't have any data on what they were. We just appreciate your support for this beach tennis community that we've developed and the many people that support it so that we can move forward and continue to enjoy it here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we have Nancy Dunn on our speakers list. Ms. Dunn, if you are present, please unmute yourself. Uh, can you see me? Hear you. Hello. Sorry, I'm, I'm having some technical difficulties here. <laughs> For some reason, the timer is all I see. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Am I going? Okay. So I did write an email and, um, you know, I've been a really involved and engaged um, community member for over 20 years in the South Bay, including I was um, cultural arts commissioner for the city of Manhattan Beach for two terms. And so I have really spent a lot of my time here in the past two decades being engaged and interested in really serving the community. And last summer during this, um, the COVID shutdown, 
I was introduced to this wonderful new sport, which I really didn't know much about. And I found it to be wonderful, not only in the fact that during a pandemic, we were able to be under the sunshine in the fresh chair, getting some vitamin D, exercising, lowering stress levels, et cetera, et cetera, in ways, you know, there was, there was not a whole lot going on during that time. And I got addicted to this great new sport. Yes. And um, so I just, I learned a lot about the community and it is really truly a remarkable community. It gathers young and old, it gathers people from all walks of life. And it's not anything that you have to be, you know, a super great anything at in order to come and have some fun. But the other side of it is that there's a wonderful um, international community. It's quite big um, in other parts of the world, Italy, Brazil, et cetera. And what I think is amazing, and this may have been said earlier, but I was eating dinner, so I didn't hear everything, is that Hermosa Beach has to be proud of the fact that this is the very first city in the U.S. that, you know, a public city that put beach tennis courts in. And I think it's something to be very, very proud about that we are really championing this new community and this sport that's gaining traction across the world. That said, um, logically speaking, it's a quieter sport than volleyball. So from a, a mere kind of logical, rational perspective, why in the world would somebody, one or two or even three people who complain about the noise when the, when the data is there, it's quiet and it's a really respectful, lovely community. I just really thank you so much and for your consideration and not changing anything. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, um, Chair Elman, those were the three on our list and we can move it to, it looks like we do have some hands up in the, the call right now. So right now, again, as a reminder, if you're calling in and you'd like to speak on this, please press star nine to raise your virtual hand and star six to unmute yourself when you are asked to do so. At this time, I believe we have a caller uh, with the last digits 2834 with your hand up. Um, you're welcome to unmute yourself at this time and speak. Caller 2834. It looks like they're, they've muted themselves. It might have been Donnie who already spoke on the phone. That's what I was wondering. Um, okay, so should we move on? Yes, let's move on. Okay, next on our list, we have a Mark von Figli. I apologize if I butchered your last name. Mark, you feel free to unmute yourself at this time. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. Um, so my name is Mark von Figli. Um, I've been involved in beach tennis for, gosh, I guess it must be 11 years. I met Donnie and Ginger by riding by these very courts and was so intrigued that uh, my wife and I stopped. We started to play the sport. We got hooked on it the very first day. And as a lifelong tennis player since the age of four, I literally stopped playing tennis for the last decade because of this sport. And I've traveled the world. I started a company based around the sport called Sexy Brand, which builds paddles, equipment, and gear for the sport of beach tennis. And we based it specifically next to these courts. We invested about $2 million into that process. Um, that also included sponsoring several of the largest tournaments in the world that were located here in Hermosa, along with Donnie and Ginger and BTA, which brought a lot of tourism on a pretty regular basis throughout the years. So it's not, it's not uncommon for us to fill up places like Grandview Inn, Beach House, and now, regularly, when we have tournaments, people are staying at H2O. So we're sp supporting the local community. But the biggest, um, I think my friends that have spoken have said so much of it so well. The, the only part I can add is that from our perspective with our company, as well as um, two other organizations we've created in beach tennis, which uh, one is a nonprofit, which is called the United States Beach Tennis Association, which is based here in Hermosa. 
we support the professional sport of beach tennis on its path to the Olympics. And Hermosa is a really critical part of that. Our location is actually a very big part of it. The store is located on 14th Street because all of the foot traffic going to the courts either goes through 15th or 14th. 14th tends to be busier because it has the kind of the U-turn uh, where the Beach House Hotel is. So we based our store on 14th because of the foot traffic, and we've invested a lot of time and energy and money in making that the one destination that people going to try the sport or to purchase necessary stuff like, you know, balls, paddles, equipment, whatever. But the key is, is that our location is next to the courts so that when people want to demo paddles, they're only like 100 feet away. So it works out really well. It worked out so well that my wife and I sold a nice house on Hermosa Avenue and we moved to be located right at these courts just in the last two years. That was a huge investment. It was a life, lifelong uh, savings and, and earnings that we put towards living here. And I can't imagine the entire reason we moved here disappearing. I just, I, I mean, I know that it sounds funny, but we literally wanted the view of beach tennis. As far as the sound goes, I echo the comments by everyone else. We already know the data and it is very common sense. Not only is it common sense, I happen to live directly in front of the courts. I am the only person that lives directly in front of the courts other than my neighbor who I think is like, in his 90s, and I'm not sure he can even hear well. So from my perspective, I sit on the balcony. I don't like annoying noises. Um, the most annoying noise I've heard in the last several years of being here is actually a speakerphone that the yoga people use. It, it's just like someone talking in your ear really loud all morning. That is the most annoying thing I've ever heard. Volleyball would be the second. The thumping of the balls is much louder than beach tennis. And then third place, if you were going to say it, it would be maybe someone playing beach tennis if you're like 20 or 30 feet away. But nobody lives 20 or 30 feet away from the courts. They're like 100, 200, 300 feet away. So I just don't get this whole thing. I think we have to keep in mind there's going to be sounds that not everybody likes, and there will be a tiny percentage of people that find seagulls annoying or find children playing and laughing and and you know <laughs> harassing each other like kids do annoying right that doesn't mean that kids aren't allowed to walk on the strand and be kids anymore so for all of us adults that still want to be kids beach tennis is the perfect solution it's really healthy it's on its way to the olympics and as my friend just said you know, we could be proud of the fact that this is the first uh, dedicated courts. It's a historical landmark when it comes to the sport of beach tennis. And just think back a couple decades when volleyball was kicking off. The first set of courts in the United States would be a really big deal. So for all of you that are not up to date, I know I'm running out of time. Beach tennis went to the World Beach Games just two years ago in Qatar. And... Uh, had a huge presentation there. They built three stadiums for the sport. So we're on our way to being recognized as an Olympic sport, but the only way it will happen is with U.S. adoption. So that's why we've invested so much time and energy and money. That's why Ginger and Donnie are putting their entire life's work into this sport. We have an infrastructure set up, you guys. This is where it yeah, all happens. We appreciate it. Thank so, you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. And uh, we've had a couple of new people join us um, during the last couple of minutes here. And just as a gentle reminder, um, public comments are limited to three minutes, which you should be able to see on your screen. Um, moving forward, um, and if you're joining us now, just one more reminder that uh, please press star nine to raise your virtual hand if you did call in and star six to unmute your line when asked to do so. Um, it looks like we only have one more hand currently up in our chat. And it is um, Mr. Dean Francois. Good evening, Dean. Hello. Are you there? We're here. We can hear you. Okay. I was trying to start my video. I don't know why uh, the host has stopped my video. I don't think it was 
was intentional. Oh, there we are. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, I appreciate the commission um, waiting until COVID was all over to reconsider this thing. It's kind of a shame that we have to go through it so many times. Um, I appreciate everything that Ginger and Donnie has done to get this Beach Tennis Association going. It has encouraged, they're very inclusive, encouraged people to play, got me to play. Um, I'm not as good as the rest of them, but that's okay. We're still out there playing and it's a lot of fun. And um, it's kind of sad that that one resident appears is, is trying to stumble this. I know your staff report says there's three complaints. We don't know if it's three complaints from the same person, uh, what the complaints are about, what the noise is about, but we've been through this before. The data shows there's no noise problem. Uh, and that's what your staff report stated in 2018. Uh, no noise compared to the same in volleyball. So we don't really know what type of noise the complaint is. Uh, now, I ran for public office early this spring and walked door to door, and, and I didn't find anyone that had complained about the noise. But I was able to go into that uh, building, and I went to the, one of the closest units to the sand, to the beach tennis courts, and it was a lively weekend day when the pros were out there playing. And yes, I understood that smashing of the ball back and forth for a little bit there, you know, was a little noise. Maybe there's some reasonable measures that can be taken. If there's a tournament going on, they can put the finals out on the courts furthest to the water, some kind of reasonable things like that. If it's, if it's a crowd noise they're afraid of, maybe we can uh, discourage playing jungle ball or some kind of rowdy kind of uh, uh, things like that. But you know, there's, we need to use some reasonableness here. I don't think these courts should be moved. Uh, we only have six courts. It doesn't look like we're going to get any more. And it's a growing sport. And they've done a great job to grow it. And it's in the commercial district. And if the beach tennis courts are moved, there's going to be volleyball courts there. They're going to have the same noise in the same spot that's close to uh, to their to where they live. And that's just part of where that district is. And that's what it's been designated for. So. Uh, you know, for all that, I think we should not schedule another hearing on this. We should be done. It's not a legitimate problem. We've been through this several times before, and it just isn't, and it's supported by your own staff report. And, uh, you know, it's a shame that this commission has to spend so much time on it and staff time to put it together, because think about it. If you have another hearing, staff's going to put together a report, decide the alternatives. You're going to come back, have a hearing. If you decide to schedule... Uh, a change in the courts, you're going to have a lot of people upset, and you know it'll be appealed to the city council. Then the city council is going to have to convene a meeting, a public hearing out. They're going to have to go through it all. This is a lot of staff time that isn't needed, and I would think that this commission in this city would have better things to do than to continue bringing this up again, unless it's really a legitimate sound problem, which I don't think it is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nick, anyone else? You're muted. You're muted. Mm -hmm. uh, almost made it. Uh, at this time, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Um, that appears to be all. Okay, so we'll close public comment and bring it back to the commission. Uh, do any commissioners have any questions? Yanni. Was there... Um any letters? I was I was trying to find a letter that was um, opposed to beach tennis in correspondence. Did anybody come across anything? Not in correspondence for this item. No, okay. there was no um, letters that were not in support that were received. So all letters were in support of beach tennis that were received. Okay, that's my only question. I will hold uh, my comments until the end. Okay, Lauren, you have your next. Yeah, I'll um, do a couple questions now and maybe save some um, for later. And I also wanted to just um, kind of make clear that we, this discussion isn't about eliminating any of the courts because uh, um, I was sensing some concern about that in the letters that I read through. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's about um, possibly moving the courts to another part of the commercial zone. So 
Um, I just want to make sure, you know, that the community, um, the tennis beach um, community, know, beach tennis community knows that we're not talking about eliminating um, any of the courts. Um, and I believe staff, um, you know, looked into this issue um, earlier, as has been alluded to, and um, I was wondering if we could get um, staff to, especially for the benefit of our newer commissioners, just, um, you know, share some of the highlights from their prior findings um, so that um, there's more of a basis to make a decision on, uh, because I know that um, the sound issues were looked at, alternatives were looked at, and it seems to me, if we all have that information, it'd be easier for us to, you know, um, to discuss this and make a decision. Um, I am disappointed if this is indeed an issue that we have received uh, no letters of opposition or no testimony this evening. And um, I'm uh, assuming, and perhaps Lisa, you brought this up before that um, residents were notified about tonight's? Just the resident that requested okay. that the courts be relocated was notified of this. So just the one resident. Just the one resident. Uh, what about the others that complained or were these, we still don't know whether it was three separate complaints or whether it was one person complaining multiple times? It was three separate complaints, but I did not have their contact information okay. to notify them. And the okay. resident who requested this does not either, unfortunately. Okay. So that would definitely have to be something that would be considered if this does um, be moved to a future agenda. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'll stop there for now uh, to give um, my fellow commissioners a chance to um, discuss. I also wanted to respond to you um, on the prior work that was done that's being referenced as well in the public comment tonight. So in 2018, which is the sound study that's being referenced, um, staff did receive similar noise complaints regarding the beach tennis courts. And at that time, these noise complaints were investigated by our code enforcement team. And their action was that they went to the area at different times of the day across several weeks. And um, their report was that they did not notice that beach tennis was louder than any other recreational activities on the beach. Um, this is not included to express if the noise from the courts is not a nuisance, but it is just for the benefit of the commission to know staff's investigating, um, staff's experience and in investigating this in 2018. Okay. Uh, Thank you have any questions for staff. Tracy. Um, just a quick question. I went back and reviewed the agenda staff report and notes from our September 2020 meeting. And I believe staff went back out there um, to just hear what was going on. And just remind me, because I believe the beach, uh, my, everything's just kind of run together but the beach was back open, right? And beach tennis was back in full swing in September of 2020? No. It was not. The beach, yeah, it was as of June 15, 2020. Wait, September 2020. It was Yes, open, it would right? not have been. Um, we were still um, operating under numerous protocols and some recreational activities were still not able to happen on the beach in September mm -hmm. of 2020 when we first heard this request. Was we didn't fully open again until June 15, 2021. But beach tennis was able to play in September of 2020? Beach tennis, I believe that they were able to play recreationally, um, but not, but not okay. as far as all permitted contract. It wouldn't have been the full um, sense of what beach tennis would be operating pre-COVID at that okay. point. Okay, that's all. that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Yanni. Yeah, um, can staff el elaborate on the uh, ordinance 8.24.030 that was referenced in um, public comment as well as in the letter? Yeah, sure, Lisa. If, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that one. And and I apologize, Commissioner Lang. I didn't. I read the 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 the, the correspondence. Was this one of the letters that came in most recently this afternoon? 
Okay, but, but the, 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 uh, that was just my way of saying, I'm not explicitly sure what the letter said. I, of course, heard, I believe it was Mr. Young referenced it this evening. Um, and, you know, that's, that is the, the city's noise control ordinance. Um, you know, that's, 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 that's kind of always one potential mechanism to, to deal with potentially prohibited noises. Um, that ordinance really isn't, I mean, I don't want to say it's not applicable because I guess some of the standards could inform your guys' you know, decision, but a finding under that ordinance is not required for any decision you guys make here, you know, tonight, either way. So if you could say for, you know, you guys could say, Hey, we think it potentially does violate that. However, we still like the courts and that's a code enforcement issue. Alternatively, if you say, Hey, you know, no, we think the courts are, are, are fine. That is in no way a, a, a blessing or, or any type of, you know, statement that there's no, there's not a single noise issue with, with beach tennis. And, and this commission has kind of, you know, you know, made that the, the formal position of the city. So, you know, that's, you know, potentially applicable, but, 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 but not really just positive for your guys' decision tonight, if, if that makes sense. No, it does. Thank you. And as far as, um, we haven't had any problems during any of their tournaments or anything like that. You know, I would I would defer to staff on that. My, my myself and my office I have not heard of, of of any noise complaints. But once again, a lot of those things may get wrapped up uh, by code enforcement and, and and not by our office. So, Lisa, Nick, I can't speak to staff receiving any noise complaints directly directly related to any tournaments or um, the contracted classes that take place for the beach tennis courts. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, um, Lisa, the sound study, when did we do the sound study? Uh, the sound study was the uh, work that was done by our code enforcement team. Okay, so, that, and, that's believe, the so it's not an official sound study. Okay. It was so staff the, investigating um, in response to noise complaints in, in 2018. Okay, uh, and the, um, can I call them the, the petitioner? Is that correct, Patrick? The person that's brought this to before us? Um, I, you know, as no, I would, I, I, I definitely wouldn't use that term that insinuates a, a potential case. Um, so I, okay. I would just say, I would say that the resident that, that has expressed concerns okay. about the notice. So the resident that has expressed concerns um, is not here to speak to this tonight. And, and we've, uh, Public comment was open. We've closed public comment. I'm assuming, which I shouldn't have done, that he is he or she is not here to speak to the problem. I don't want to say that for sure because we don't see all the information for okay. everyone that's on the line. Um, but they were invited to the meeting this evening um, and given the information to join. So um, I I would hope that. If they were present, they would be able to address this during public comment, but I can't say for sure if they're here or not. Um, well, um, Tracy had um, a lot of my comments to make, so I'm, I'm, I'm done asking questions. So I'm going to bring this back and see if anyone has any thoughts they want to share before we, yes. Commissioner Elman, I, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Just going back to that, to that previous, I, I, I just want to, because I understand that's, I believe that's been asked three or four times by by the by the commission, and so you know, once again, I, I have no idea who the who the person is. If he or she is on and has experienced any level of technical difficulty, if they were trying to raise their hand or trying to zoom in, um, please. And then Pat just and then Pat gets frozen. So yes, we I would like. I think I know where Pat was going. If you are on the line and you would like to still speak on this matter as the um, resident requester, please do email me as you do have my email address and we can give you the opportunity to have the floor. Okay. So I'm going to bring this back until uh, Lisa sees something, which she's sharing, looking at her screen intently. Um, does anyone want to start this off? Thank you, Yanni. Well, first of all, I'm terribly, um, 
upset that the, the, the person who is frustrated with the sound isn't here. Um, you know, as commissioners, we sit up here and when issues are brought to us, it is very important to hear both sides, especially uh, an issue that um, appears to be um, uh, interfering with this particular resident's quality of life. So I would have loved to have heard where they're coming from, for lack of better words. But to put this into perspective, you know, I was one of the commissioners who approved not only the additional courts, but the courts in general. And between Mark and the other folks involved, they have been very passionate and they've worked very, and they've come a long way. They've worked very hard to get the sport on the court, fit into our commercial, commercial zone matrix. We extensively looked at the other commercial zones at Second Street. And when I say extensive, I mean extensive. And um, Mark and the rest of the pickleball, and I'm sorry, pickleball community, um, beach tennis community can agree. <laughs> and it came down to the simple necessity, as uh, Mark put it, was the relevance of the court's proximity to their retail store. And we talked about all kinds of options and the pickleball community felt extremely passionate about being in that location within the commercial zone. So that was the history. And we spent quite some time on this. Uh, it's not that anything went unchecked, nothing went unconsidered. And um, you know, it goes back to a very passionate group of, um, of players. And I see them every morning when I go surf and check out the waves. They're there and hardly hear any noise. Um, granted, I've never been uh, president at one of their tournaments. I know the tournaments across the board doesn't matter what the activity is tends to create noise. And, you know, I mean, it just, it is what it is. It's a large, it's a bigger gathering than usual. And sometimes that can um, raise the, uh, the irie of, you know, neighbors who aren't used to hearing something like that. But, you know, um, once again, um, I wish that we could hear more from the neighbor and, you know, without hearing from them and without seeing you know, the complaints without seeing uh, a, a list of signatures that are um, recognizing that this is a noise complaint. I really, in my opinion, and with me, uh, the conversation of moving these courts stops here. I don't think it needs to go any further. We've done our due diligence over the years until I see more evidence. Um, I feel that the beach tennis community is doing an excellent job. And, um, you know, I appreciate them showing up and taking the time to write the letters and taking the time to speak in front of us. So thank you very much. I guess I heard you now. Okay, so uh, anyone else have anything to say? Okay, and I'll, what, what I will say is as someone that dealt with uh, the noise issues through the pickleball program for two years, uh, I am very sensitive to what anyone views to be a nuisance or a problem. So I, I would have loved to have heard from um, all the neighbors, one neighbor, but this is not the first time that this has been before us. And um, I, I, for me, there doesn't seem to be much to discuss. And um, I, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, Tracy. Um, yeah, I agree. Yanni, you, I thought you said it perfectly and you echoed my sentiments exactly. And the only thing that I would add is perhaps, and this is a consideration that the beach tennis players could, could maybe extend to the neighbors is, um, and I think one of you actually brought it up that when you have your tournaments, maybe you move that final court to the most westerly court, and that could alleviate some of the noise if, if it is, um, a problem, but that would just be a consideration on your end. But I, I think Yanni really said it really well. And that's, those are my thoughts. Okay, anyone else? All right, I'll bring it back. And can I ask, is there anyone who would like to make a motion? Before we make a motion, I just wanted to um, ask if it's appropriate, Pat, to provide one more opportunity for the resident to come forth. I did get an email that they couldn't connect, so I did resend the information again for the meeting link via Zoom and the call-in information. So 
Um, I just sent that email and I just wanted to make sure that we did provide them one last opportunity now that they've received that information again. If Got it's it. appropriate, Pat. Sure. So I, I first want to make sure, can everyone hear me? I apologize. I myself have experienced some internet issues. Thus, I've now uh, pivoted to my mobile phone. And so did you did you receive that email during the meeting? I just received it. Right now? In yeah, terms that they of, were having trouble connecting. So I resent the information. And so, you know, this, you know, during this kind of, you know, virtual meetings, it's, it's, it is always best to kind of err on the side of, of, of maximum public comment. Um, so, so while it's, you know, that, that, that would be my recommendation. However, it, it is kind of up to the, to the commission's discretion. Um, if they think that the, what was provided was, was sufficient, they, they're free to move forward. However, if they would like to, to provide this, he or she resident another, you know, one to two minutes. Um, you know, that is, that is, that is fine. Um, and, and yeah, that, 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 that would be my comment. Okay. So then my next question to you, Patrick, is if we open it up again, now this person has had their three minutes, am I opening it back up to anyone else who wishes to speak who has not spoken before? Or can I open it up to those who have already spoken? So as to the, the I, I believe that the, the question, the answer to the first question is yes. So if no one's spoken before and we open up public comment, you know, I don't, I don't think it's, 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 it's wise to get into the, into the details of, okay, how come you didn't speak? Did you have tech difficulties? Did you not have tech, di uh, tech difficulties? As to the, to, to the other point, um, yes, I, I, I would think it prudent. Um, I would I would recommend that those people who have already spoke though limit their their public comment to what is to any new information, i.e., what is said. Um, we have, you know we've we've heard everyone speak. We don't need a we don't need to hear them repeat verbatim what they what they just said. But should uh, a new public comment bring up some different issue that they were not allowed to speak to previously, then yes, I think I think they should be allowed to speak. So. I'm going to open this back up. Uh, Nick, you want to take care of that for us? Um, yes. So as a reminder, if you would like to speak on this um, and you are calling in, please press star nine to raise your virtual hand and star six to unmute your line when asked to do so. To speak. And so, Lisa, I, I do just want to make sure, have you received confirmation that the the, the at issue individual has been able to access the meeting? I have not. I've not received a reply since my last communication. Okay, yeah. got it. And so, you know, you know, you know, this is a, you know, one of these issues dealing with this new kind of tech COVID world where if people have issues, um, you know, I'm not sure if we want to take a, a brief recess to, to allow this person to, to potentially connect um, you know, uh, Chair Elman, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that was the only reason that you opened public comment. So to the, you know, to the effect that this person is is, is not here, you know, I don't believe we, we, that we need to let anyone else speak. Um, but, you know, th th those are kind of my thoughts on it. So the, the, the choices that this person has right now to be able to speak is to, one, on their computer, join the Zoom call, or two, call in on their phone, or three, they could have driven over to City Hall. <laughs> and those Correct. are, okay. Yes. Or email in also, right? Okay, thank you, Yanni. So, um, Nick, can you uh, remind everyone one more time exactly how they can um, raise their virtual hand they can dial nine uh, pound of star nine. Can we go through that one more time, please? Yes, if you are calling in tonight, you need to press star nine to raise your virtual hand and star six to unmute your line. If you are not calling in and just on the Zoom app, I believe it is an app feature just to raise your hand and someone can correct me if you're wrong or if you have more directions than that. That's correct. It is an app feature, or you can simply unmute yourself at this time to speak unmute via the Zoom app if you've joined us through that. The microphone is unmuted. 
How do you unmute it? We hear someone. So we, we okay. So uh, there's every time someone uh, by the name of Eric E R I K speaks, we can hear you. So I'm. You might Hello. think that you're. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, we can. Ah, fantastic. Okay. So um, is this Mr. Singer? Yes. Okay, um, Mr. Singer. Uh, can we start the timer over again, Nick? And we're gonna, you've got your three minutes to share your information uh, with us, please. Thank you. Yeah, I spoke with Lisa, or I emailed her um, a few weeks ago, and she emailed me today at two o'clock wanting me to contact the other residents that were not happy I was working, so I couldn't do that. Um, so if you need more residents, I could do that, but I was giving no, given no uh, time to do that. Uh, I don't want to eliminate the courts. I just want to move further south. That's all. So I'm not quite sure if that's a big problem to move them even a hundred yards would be fantastic for the neighbors. Um, uh, I don't know the logistics of moving the courts, but if you simply just move one set of volleyball courts in its place, I think that would eliminate the entire problem. You know, I respect the beach tennis people. I have nothing against them. I, I, I think it's a great sport. I hope they flourish. That's not my concern. My concern is just, you know, and it's not the tournaments either. That's not my issue either. It's just the constant, uh, you know, noise of the rackets, which is different than volleyball or children screaming or anything else. It's like it's mainly like a construction site sound when you have people nailing in nails all day. Uh, it's just it's just an annoying sound. And uh, you know, if you had that next to your house in your front yard, I think you would understand it. Um, I don't think there was any noise studies done. I think it was just a few code, code enforcement people coming out saying, yeah, it sounds good. Um, but I'm sure if there was a legitimate noise study done, they would find that, yeah, it's, this is something different than all the other noises on the strand because I've lived here 25 years. So I've heard everything and, you know, I, I get along with everything. Uh, this is just something very different. And I think it would be alleviated just by simply moving it 100 yards. So I don't think they would be that upset about that. I'm not quite sure why this site is so precious, but you know, 100 yards would make a big difference to the residents. And uh, you know, I, like I said, I hope I don't want to get rid of them. I don't want them to leave. I just want them to move slightly further south. And I think that could be done just by moving want two volleyball courts side by side in its place. And I think that would take care of the whole problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Singer. And um, Nick, we're going to allow, Patrick, we're going to allow everyone and anyone who wishes to speak, um, who hasn't spoken before, they will get three minutes. And anyone who wants to speak one more time, is it fair to say one minute? Yes, I think I think that that, that would be perfectly fair. With once again the the, the direction to to merely address any any comments that they that they heard, you know, from from Mr. Singer, and not just kind of continue on and, and make their their case. Okay. So, um, if okay. anyone would like to speak, Nick, you want to reach out to them? Yes, um, so once again, as a reminder, if you're calling in today, uh, it's a star nine to raise your virtual hand and a star six to unmute your line when asked to do so. At this point, Chair Elman, we do have one hand up and um, it's Mr. Francois who did speak previously. So um, give him his one minute and we'll- Mr. Francois, when you're ready to speak, you can unmute yourself and I will start the timer. Well, once again, my video hasn't started yet. So don't start that clock yet. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Okay. I, I, this is highly unusual to go through all these hoops about having uh, the one person that complained uh, allowed to speak after you close public hearing. And everyone else who spoke, many have already left the meeting because once you close public hearing, it's closed. And uh, the individual did not state why he wasn't at the public hearing or why he wasn't allowed to speak. And he never sought commission approval to open it back up. And if anything, I'm gonna probably go over my one minute, but I won't readdress anything I said before. Um, I will say that, that it's not a very good procedure. And, and, and if you end up wanting to move further, you better put it back on your agenda again at this point before you send it off to staff and come up with a recommendation. Because like I said, uh, the public has left the public hearing and there may have been other people that might've wanted to speak and they figured, well, the public hearing was over and they couldn't. So uh, in regards to uh, the comments that were made, um, it is a commercial zone. It's designated as that. The six courts are equally distributed in that zone and there's no room to move it 100 yards uh, to the north. Obviously, that would be an easy way to do it if it could, but it can't be. If it's done, volleyball courts are going to be moved back in the commercial zone, and it's going to have the noise from the volleyball courts instead of the noise from the beach tennis courts. If you split it up, you're going to have confusion amongst the public who are going to try to play volleyball, and they're going to be using beach tennis courts. Now, there are some people that do try to play volleyball on beach tennis courts and it ruins the nets because the nets aren't as strong and they're lower. And if you got them in the middle, you have to put up more signs, more, you know, that's unsightly on the beach to put up signs saying, well, this is beach tennis. You got to play volleyball over there or over there. And it just makes no sense to break it up like that or to move it because you can't really move it anywhere without moving volleyball courts in this place. Obviously, if you could, that'd be an easy solution. Or if you could move it further to the west, uh, but you've got the lifeguard uh, right away going on. So obviously those are easy solutions that could easily be done, but it isn't an easy solution. It's going to be reconfiguring everything. It's going to be scheduling another public hearing, staff work, trying to put it all together. And like I said, you won't get far because, because then, you'll, then you'll have to come up with a recommendation. We'll appeal it to the city council. The city council is going to have to get involved. It's just a big mess over what we still haven't gotten a description from this complainer of what types of noise it is other than it's just the ball hitting the paddle. I mean, it isn't that much more noise than volleyball. And really to put the whole Beach Tennis Association players through this again and again just seems to be not the prudent thing to do and inefficient government at work. Thank you. Thank you. Nick, anyone else? Yes, it looks like we do have a hand up from Tim Anderson, and I don't believe Mr. Anderson spoke earlier. So, Tim, as it's your first time speaking, you will have three minutes of public comment starting right now. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much um, for letting me speak. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say, first of all, thanks for letting the beach tennis community play down there. Um, a great community. Uh, it's a series of people that are very active, love to um, go out and have fun, um, but pretty um, a pretty well balanced and, and laid back, low key kind of vibe too. So, you know, I, I think if the the noise issue really comes down to more of the balls hitting the tennis rackets or the beach tennis rackets, um, it. it to me, and this is just me, um, I, I respectfully acknowledge the person that is, you know, that that's annoying them, you know, that, that's, that's their truth. And that's what they're speaking into. So um, I'm sorry that that's clearly a nuisance um, to them. However, I think that um, in the grand scheme of things that that shouldn't really make an entire group that have been thoughtfully planned out by the commission and put into a zone where it allows for this type of activity to have to go through the process of moving. Um, I know that throughout several times of the year, the entire beach tennis uh, courts are taken down just so volleyball can take over our space. And even though that's a pain for us, we go ahead and do that in good faith to share uh, with the community and give back to the volleyball community. 
that's not ideal. But if you're saying just move 100 yards south or take a couple of you know the volleyball nets down, now we're infringing on their space even more and have, in my opinion, I'm guessing um, even more chance of the courts being down even more so throughout the year. So while I respectfully um, say I'm sorry that this noise is a nuisance, I would I would suggest Eric come out and play with us. We'd love to have you out there. And it sounds like you don't have a real beef with the sport, and we'd love to have you out there and 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 have a good time together and, and dink around and play, and get you involved in the sport because you might love it. And maybe that that noise, that nuisance, that irritation will go away if if you fall in love with the sport like so many other people have. So that's my two cents. Um, thanks for letting me speak. And thanks again for letting us play. I know we've been out there for 10 to 12 years. I've played personally for five years and it's just a great sport um, that's brought in a lot of people in the community um, and a lot of people that are giving back to the community in a lot of ways, to local businesses and also helping each other out and in a lot of positive uplifting ways. So that's all I have. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, Nick. Yes, Chair Elman. Um, I, at this time, I'm not seeing any other hands. Would you like to do one more announcement or? Hey, this is Nancy Dunn, and I would like to say another moment of a few words, if possible. Okay. I don't know how to raise my hand, so. No problem. Go ahead, Ms. Dunn. You have a minute. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to use video. So one of the other things, in, in addition to having served as a commissioner for you know, one of the beach cities is that, you know, I'm very aware and really want to appreciate you for, you know, really doing your job the way it's meant to be, which is to hear, to listen to your constituency, right, the residents here. So thank you. Um, however, it just feels like a, an extreme, um, a situation that's a little bit out of balance, just given, you know, given this one resident. Secondly, I own a property in Manhattan Beach that is 15 feet from the Live Oak tennis courts. And the sound that I have there is honestly one of the most soothing <laughs> sounds there could be. It's like living in, on a resort, you know, at a, at a resort. So I, I'm really confused because, you know, from my perspective and every other person I've ever played beach tennis with and introduced the sport to, it's, uh, you know, Eric described it as a construction zone. Uh, 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 let's just say far from it. I would really love to see if there's one other person in the city of Manhattan Beach who might reckon it as the same. So just saying that with personal experience living next to recreational sports courts where it's a very similar sound, a beach tennis racket against a decompressed much, it's a 60 pound ball, much more decompressed than a tennis ball and a tennis racket on a tennis ball. It's about the same thing. So thank thanks. you, Ms. Dunn. Okay, we do have one other hand up today. Uh, it is Mr. Rhodes who spoke previously, so I will reset the clock to one minute. Thank you. Um, I would just like to first appreciate that the comments by um, Eric Singer were not uh, unsupportive of beach tennis. So I appreciate that balance kind of note. But I, I think the first thing might be Going back to the city, I know when they came back with different options for moving the courts, there was no option of just moving it a little bit south. So before going any further, can we request feedback from the representatives of the city based on their previous comments about where the courts would have to move to, about whether that would even be possible, because I know it's been brought up before. I'm going to assume that that is something that we would have to discuss when we bring it back to the to the commission. Correct. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm not even sure if we have that information. That would be something for the for the future um, agenda. Go ahead, Mr. Rhodes. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, uh, I mean, basically, my, I, you know, although respecting Mr. Singer's. Uh, uh, issue with noise. I mean, it, you know, I, I just think that based on the last time we had a hearing 
and nobody put anything in writing or showed up. Uh, this time, uh, there was nothing in writing, and one person showed up uh, after the actual public comment was closed. Um, and the feedback from the commissioners was uh, consistent in terms of recognizing the desire on behalf of the beach tennis community to be supportive of the public, but also wanting to support the potential uh, continuation of a really important recreational support sport in the city that has been set up over time with many people like Donnie and Ginger and Mark and many others. Um, that um, we try to move forward and um, not have to continuously return to these issues, but be able to move forward. And, and uh, again, as Tim mentioned, uh, hopefully Eric Singer can come out and, and join us and, and enjoy the sport and see the noise as something that he enjoys uh, with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Nick. Okay, we had another hand pop up. Uh, Tanner Seward, I don't believe you spoke earlier, so I'll put three minutes on the clock and you can speak at this time. Okay. Awesome, thank you, I'll keep it quick. Um, I just wanna echo Gary's thoughts. Um, and, you know, we've been there, I just wanna reiterate, like we've been there for over a decade. Um, so I don't think any real issues have come up and, if you look like that spot on six on 14th street has been just, it's been home for a bunch of us on the call. Um, and if you like take, for example, 16th street, the volleyball crew there, I play with them. Like if you like move their courts, like it just wouldn't be 16th anymore. Like we've created a culture around that spot. Uh, the water fountains right there. It's like great for great for families to like in picnic and watch the sport grow. And, um, it's been a real place of home for me um, and a bunch of people on the call and people live in that spot to watch the sport too. And um, as people have said on the call previously too. So um, thank you for your time for letting me speak as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, at this time, I'm not seeing any hands um, being raised. So I'm gonna reach out one more time and then I'm going to close public comment. So if anyone has anything to say, would you please raise your hand and Nick will unmute you. Okay, Nick, let's close. I'm gonna close public comment and bring it back to the commission again. Okay, so does anyone have anything to say? or more comments to make. Yes, Lauren. Okay, well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad that we were able to um, hear from Mr. Singer as well. I think that was very important as um, Yanni was um, alluding to. Um, now, I had thought that staff did kind of look into this before in terms of other options and whether there was any potential. And I know, and I believe that was a challenge. Um, but that being said, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought Mr. Singer was suggesting that we move the northernmost row of um, beach tennis courts south and then to replace them with two volleyball courts side by side. Um, I wrote down in its place. Was I hearing that correctly? Because if, if I was, and that's the case, I don't know how that would solve any sort of noise problems in that um, the beach tennis courts are um, purposely moved 100 feet from the strand wall and the volleyball courts are closer than that. And, um, and, and I also do think that this splitting this up or moving things around is not uh, splitting them up is not a good idea. You have your volleyball event, tournaments and events, and then you have the beach tennis events. So, so that sounds like kind of a recipe for a lot of confusion. Um, and uh, I guess those are my additional kind of observations and comments at this point. Okay. 
Johnny. Well, you know, we had talked about moving the, the beach tennis courts, um, breaking them up, actually having them at 14th Street in the commercial zone and then bookending it uh, down at 2nd Street at the other commercial zone just to spread it out, have opportunity for, you know, the entire beach to play this new sport. But the beach tennis community wanted to stay together. And that's really what I'm hearing from this group is that it's a community event. It's a community activity. And if memory serves correct, you know, we talked about other locations. They said, no, keep our designated amount of courts together because we want to play together. And, and um, Lauren, I agree with you. I, I believe that Eric said that his solution was to swap those beach tennis courts for volleyball courts. And I'm with you. I don't see that solving the noise issue either. So I, I, I support that statement. And I hope that gives clarity to, you know, the, uh, the thought process that the beach tennis community has had regarding their location, as well as, um, you know, the previous commission. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments to make? Okay. Um, it's never easy to decide what one person's comfort level is versus someone else's. And um, again, I, I would have liked to have heard more information uh, from those that are complaining. And I, I think we've given uh, the residents in that area more than enough time to gather their, their information. Uh, it's this is the third time this has been before us. So um, although I, I, I don't wanna say I, I don't believe that um, Mr. Singer feels that this is a, a noise that he can't live with, I, I, don't, I don't see people complaining about it. And uh, after going through many meetings with people over, over noise of balls hitting paddles, um, from what I've heard, because I've been down to the park a number of times during tournament play versus just regular play at the beach tennis courts, and it's nothing I could possibly hear. So um, that being said, I don't think I would be able to support this. So does anyone want to make a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion due to the lack of evidence of any sort of a disturbance to a large number of neighbors within the 14th street area of uh, close to the beach tennis courts the conversation of moving the beach tennis courts comes to an end tonight okay i'm looking for a second a second okay nick Okay, roll call, uh, Chair Elman. I, uh, yes, thank you. Vice Chair Horowitz. Yes. Commissioner Lang. Yes. Commissioner Moroni. Yes. And Commissioner Pizer Mays. Yes. Okay, and now we're going to move on to um, staff report regarding the uh, current beach volleyball. Oh, no, sorry. We're going to the creation of the residential volleyball court use subcommittee. Lisa. Thank you, Chair Elman. So, yes, tonight staff is requesting the creation of a residential volleyball court use subcommittee. The city currently maintains all the volleyball courts located within the commercial zone. Again, the commercial zone is um, between 10th and 15th streets. Volleyball courts outside of the commercial zone are maintained by members of the community. Following the city's effort to professionalize its relationships with all partners in the community, staff requests the creation of a subcommittee that would assist in certain tasks related to the beach volleyball courts in the residential area, including review of the policies for new court applications, requirements for future maintenance of the courts, and expectations of the city. Staff has already begun outreach to develop a comprehensive list of our court stewards of these courts in the residential zone who maintain each of the volleyball courts located, I'm just sorry, I was just repeating what I had just said, <laughs> um, to allow for an opportunity to gather their input as well in these discussions. 
We've included a list in your staff report tonight of the current subcommittees. And we did want to note for tonight's discussion that our department use policy subcommittee is currently finalizing their last project, which is the Hermosa Beach Little League organization and agreement. So that should be completed by the end of this calendar year. And that concludes my staff report. So um, I'm going to open this up to questions for staff. Yes, Tom. Lisa, how many people have gotten back to you? How many courts have gotten back to you? I'm going to actually ask Nick if he has an updated number from my last time I received a report on how many um, court stewards have gone back to us. Well, unfortunately, I don't have a specific exact number for you tonight, Commissioner Moroni. I'm happy to follow up with you on that. Um, I know a good amount of the court stewards have responded to our signs and replied to the email in regards to them uh, providing some sort of maintenance to those courts. Maybe, maybe staff could send an email out to us identifying the streets, the courts that haven't responded because we may know somebody. We could reach out personally to those people. So that might be helpful. Certainly, we can Great definitely idea. follow up with the commission on that. Anyone else have any questions for staff? Okay, um, so my, my question is, we kind of piggybacking on, on Tom's comments do we feel like we're being successful with this outreach? Are we happy with how it's going? Or do we give ourselves a deadline? Yes, we are happy with how it's going. We've gotten a lot of communication on this matter and we have been able to identify a good amount of the court stewards. And we did give the deadline of um, September 30th. So um, we just need to finalize what our, what our current count is and who we're missing. And that would be great if the commission could help us identify those that are missing. So then my, my question would be, it, we've already reached the, the tentative deadline of September 30th. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to organize, we have a map uh, of where the courts are and we're gonna organize by checking them off to be sure we understand where we are with that. And then are we going to Put up a red notice on those that have not been given a home and um, or know who their parents are so that we can be sure that what courts are not being i'm assuming if no one is taking um, the initiative to check in with you then those courts are not being maintained that's all i'm guessing but uh, is that where we're kind of going with this right now so in a way, yes. What we would probably do at this point is um, we would reach out to a couple members of the volleyball community to see if they can help us identify the missing court stewards that we haven't been able to receive communication from. Um, and then we would probably put another notice up with a um, shortened deadline to get back to us and just the simil a similar notice inviting them to be part of these um, discussions and that we are trying to create a comprehensive list of all these stewards. And did you have an idea of when that notice might go out, when it would be posted? Do you have a thought what you're trying to do? Are you trying to do this by the end of November, by the end of October? Do you have a mental idea? I'd like to develop a more firm timeline with the subcommittee as well, actually, for that. Um, we've kind of mapped it out on our end, and um, this is something that we kind of wanted to work on the subcommittee on finalizing. Okay, so again, uh, does anyone else have any questions for staff? Yes, Tracy. I think I'm a little unclear as to the um, objective of the subcommittee. I know it's to create um, a conversation with the court stewards in the city in terms of expectations of maintenance, um, but I'm not sure. It, it In the staff report, it started to talk about um, um, clear policies outlining this program, but I, I think I'm still unclear about the objectives for the subcommittee. And 
As to the notice, um, obviously social media isn't formal communication, but I think there was some confusion about what those notices were on the volleyball court. Um, and I think there's been comments to clear it up, but that might be another reason to give them a little bit of an extension so that they understand as understand better as I will what the objectives of the subcommittee are. Correct. There was confusion and concern of, of the notices, which we did go out there and re-notice to um, simply state at this point that we are really just trying to create this comprehensive list of these court stewards. Because right now, um, past the point of applying um, for a volleyball court in the residential area, if it's approved by Commission Council and the Coastal Commission, there's no agreement in place at that point. And we would like to review that and see if there's an, a need for that agreement and a responsibility of the court stewards from that point moving forward and what the city's expectations are as well for those residential courts in the residential zone. Because right now, once those courts are approved and in place, there's no program to maintain them from that point forward that's clear as to the responsibilities of each party. But this isn't stemming from a, a problem or a situation or any kind of adverse. Um... This has been a goal for a while okay. to create this comprehensive list and review this. Okay. Yeah. Can I can I add to that, Lisa? My understanding was is that we just there was a there was a file that was lost that might have had some information, but there has never been. Um, back in the day, a three ring binder that says courts one, two, and three are being maintained by this party and courts five, six, and seven are being maintained by this party. And that, that's, that was the initial goal of trying to figure out what exactly. And, and then as you stated earlier, what the responsibilities are of the city versus the court steward. Thank you. Yes. Yes, we haven't had a, a complete file that clearly identifies all the courts in the residential area and who maintains them. And that is our number one goal at this point. And then from that point forward, we would like to work with the subcommittee to review the policy um, for applying for these courts. And then again, from that point forward, what the expectations are of both parties, the court steward and the city. Got it. Anyone else? Okay. So the next thing we need to do is figure out who would like to step up and be part of this subcommittee. Um, uh, I apologize, Chairman. Have we opened it up to public comment yet? No, I, so I, I was kind of curious, where do we go with this? Are we, should yeah. I, I open it up now and then? Yeah, yeah, I'll open it up right now and that way okay. that would transition seamlessly into the more deliberative process. Got it, thank you. So um, anyone who wishes to speak on this matter? Um, Nick, do you want to read those wonderful words again one more time? I would love to. Um, as a reminder, if you'd like to make public comment and you're calling by phone, please press star nine to raise your virtual hand and star six to unmute your line when asked to do so. If you're using the app Zoom, you can just raise the hand button or uh, begin speaking, I suppose. I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Okay, one more time, if anyone would like to speak to this matter about the uh, creation of a residential volleyball court use subcommittee, now is the time. Okay. Oh. Looks. Hello, hi. Um, this is Jordan Langdale in in real quick, sorry, I had a hard time getting on. Um, is it okay to comment on the, in the public section comment here? Regarding uh, regarding the residential volleyball court subcommittee? Yes, please. Please, you've got three minutes. Okay, thanks so much. I'll be I'll be real quick. I, I was just trying to figure out um, the best way of becoming a steward of a, of a court in the residential section and what those requirements would be. And that's that's your that's your question. Yes, please. Okay, so we'll bring this back and um, uh, we'll 
let you know in a minute if we can help you. Um, Nick, anyone else? At this time, Chair Elman, I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Okay. So seeing no one else to speak, I'm going to close public comment. And um, Lisa, is there just something we can quickly let uh, Mr. Lang know that he can reach out to you? Of course. Um, he may reach out to the Community Resources Department and we can share the current volleyball court application. Um, once the application is submit submitted, it does need to go before commission and council for review and approval. And then it does require approval from that point um, by the Coastal Commission. And to do that, he can go on our website and get your uh, information? Correct. You can email any of our team. Um, our, all our information is there. And our general department email as well. It is hbconnect at hermosabeach.gov. And we can share that application and current policies in place with the resident or community member. Thank you. I hope that is helpful. So I'm going to bring it back uh, to the commission. And does anyone have any thoughts about whether or not they are interested or some thoughts about the subcommittee? Tracy. Um, I could be further from a volleyball player than you could find. Um, but since my previous subcommittee task has come to a nice conclusion, I think I can throw my hat in the ring. Um, if you don't mind a non-volleyball player on a volleyball subcommittee. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have a thought about whether or not they're interested in serving? And I'm looking at all of us, and although maybe, Yanni, I'm going to assume that the rest of us are not, <laughs> are like Tracy, maybe not quite the, the volleyball players that we would have wanted to be. Um, so I'm going to say that although I'm my subcommittee meet, uh, that I will no longer be around shortly, I heard I'm, I'm it'll be the end of November is what I understand. Um, I, I do have the time and I do have the interest. So, um, but is there anyone else that has the time and the interest? Okay, well. Lisa, I think we've answered your your question. Do I um, well, what so, do I need to do now, Patrick? Correct. So so while I, I understand that those those two are you know directly linked, i.e., do we want to create the subcommittee and then do we have someone or commissioners willing to serve on the subcommittee? Okay. So you know once again, there's no issue. But what we would want to do is someone would, would merely make a motion. Once again, it would it would do two things. And so I guess if the and once again, I at least I, I, I've noticed two, but mm -hmm. the motion would create the subcommittee and then appoint yourself. And then I apologize, I believe it was Vice Chair Horowitz was the was the other member. That would be the motion to create one. On the other hand, if the commission does not feel like this is a proper subcommittee, a motion could be made to say, no, we we as the you know as a, as the commission do not want to create this subcommittee. So, so do we need to make two the gun. No, I mean, once again, I think I, I think it's fine to make that to make one motion combined if you want to create it and appoint uh, Chair Elman and Vice Chair Horowitz. Alternatively, if you do not want to create it, that would be the motion. Okay, so uh, does anyone want to make the motion? Yanni. I'll make a motion to create a subcommittee to work collaboratively with the staff on review of the residential volleyball courts and nominate Commissioner Elman and Horowitz to the subcommittee. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Nick. Nick, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> Two times, okay. Roll call, uh, Chair Elman. Yes. Vice Chair Horowitz. Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Commissioner Moroni? Yes. And Commissioner Pizer Mains? Yes. Okay. So I think we're moving on to Commissioner's reports. 
So subcommittees, the special event subcommittee with uh, Lang and Elman, we don't have anything to report. And the community theater, that would be with commissioners Lang and Pizer Mains. Okay. And municipal le uh, leases with, again, Commissioner Pizer Mains and Commissioner Horowitz. It's been a not a very busy month. Uh, the Community Resources Department Use Policy with um, uh, myself and Commissioner Moroni. We um, had a meeting with Kelly before she left. Uh, Tom, do you want to go over uh, what it is we did with the um, uh, the Little League sure. contract? Sure, right Kelly. Here. Kelly gave us a, an early draft of an agreement that had that, that has been floating around and a lot of people haven't weighed in on and probably may not still have weighed in on. But then we, Barbara and I then met at Clark Field, spent a couple hours there. Barbara brought me up to speed on all things Little League and Clark. And then we had a meeting with uh, Lisa, Kelly and Nick where we went over the draft agreement. Barbara and I made some specific suggestions uh, it's incorporated in the existing draft that's now being circulated. There are still some unresolved issues or there were unresolved issues two weeks ago when we had this meeting. Uh, we're waiting for input from Public Works and from Little League. And then I think uh, we're expecting the next draft after Public Works and Little League weighs in to come back to the subcommittee. We'll weigh in again and hopefully there'll be universal agreement on the issues. There, it, it doesn't seem like there's likely to be any major controversial points that can't be resolved. So I expect, I expect the you know the agreement will be done, you know before the end of the year. That would be my expectation. Thank you. I, Tom was extraordinarily helpful when it came to reading through a lot of, as Pat would expect expect me to say, a lot of legal jargon and legal maneuvering, and. Um, I, I think we came up with some some pretty good ideas of of how we could all work together a little more smoothly. And um, I, I I thought it was a very very successful meeting, and I look forward to uh, the next draft. So thank you very much, Tom. And then on to the Clark Building improvements. Uh, Lauren, do you mind if I just go over quickly the, the email that we received? Okay, so um, we got an, an email from uh, Cambria giving us uh, an update that we had some choices to make when it came to um, the lights and the sound. Acoustic ceiling. Thank the acoustic ceiling. And we seem to all have agreed on um, one specific choice. So we're excited to be moving on to that. Uh, there is a question of um, more work that still needs to be shared from the um, firm that's working this all out for us. His name escapes me right now, but um, I think we're doing really well. And uh, are we expecting to have more information on that uh, before our next meeting? Do you know, Lisa? Or I don't think Cambria is here. Yes, we um, we do have we do expect to have more information at the next meeting. We actually expect to be bringing this matter um, hopefully to our next meeting um, or the meeting in December. So it actually will be um, reviewed by the commission soon. Okay, and then it will go on to the council. Correct. Okay, great. So next would be a commission liaison roles, um, and that would be the Surfers Walk of Fame. Yeah, uh, Lisa and I, we had a preliminary meeting the other day um, just to plan out the uh, 2022 ceremonies, and we will have more detailed updates um, by the end of the year. So you're working on 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 dates and... Dates are established, just okay. event details. Okay. Are, are we going to have a public party? Is that the plan? Yeah. Without uh, speaking on behalf of our uh, steering committee and our partners, our community partners, uh, yes, that is the intended goal. 
for April, Lisa, what was it, 24th, 25th? I want to say the 22nd and the 23rd. I'm verifying those dates right now. Yes, the 22nd and the 23rd of April. So yeah, we're looking to party. Um, again, we're, there is no access Hermosa at this time. So um, we'll just go on to uh, items requested by commissioners. We don't have any. So now we have other matters. So Tom, I think this is your time to bring up uh, your idea. Yeah, I just wanna pick up where we all left off. We all approved the bench, but we also all agreed that we should give some guidance to public works. They're asking for guidance about where to put additional benches on the Greenbelt. And I think we should set that date to come back to us for a discussion and some sort of resolution as to what those guidelines might be. Um, I don't know what additional work staff has to do. I mean, they've, they've given us plenty of plenty of uh, detail on where the benches are now. You know, we need to individually do our own due diligence as to what we think is appropriate or not appropriate with respect to the green belt. So I, I would I think we should set a date sometime next year. If I may respond to that, I I um, I know this is an item that we work jointly on with Public Works, so I do have hesitancy in setting a date without discussing those dates with them prior. Um, so I can bring it back um, for commission's discussion at a future agenda if that's appropriate um, with the dates, or I can just make sure to schedule it in, er, in early next year. Um, I can see Pat just unmuted, so I'll let him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, you know, I think that it, 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 it is kind of up to the the commission and that, you know, your, your concerns are, are valid. Hey, we don't want to set a date if we get sideways with, with with public works. If the if the if the commission is is comfortable merely directing staff and, and, and feels confident that it will come back next early, early next year, you know, I, 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 I don't want to put words in your mouth, Commissioner Maroney, I would assume that's in the first three months of the year. Um, or, or if not, then Lisa, you, you're 100 percent accurate. We can always bring this back up at you know at, at the the next meeting under this under this very same item. I mean, I'm comfortable with just uh, asking that you bring it back to us sometime early next year, so it doesn't get lost. You got it. We'll make sure it doesn't get lost, and we'll return in early next year. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have uh, any? Thing to share or add to other matters? Okay, I do. So um, I've taken this position with uh, the commission that I am um, been known as being a slightly overachiever. When there's something before us um, and I can drive and go to see it, if I can touch it, if I can play it, whatever it is, I, I, I take my position extraordinarily seriously, not that everyone else doesn't, but we all have a way of how we work. And um, I've, I, I know that I made, a, a, I made it known that I wasn't very supportive of the bathroom project as it ended. And I spoke as well as another commissioner at the city council level and let that be known. And I've given this a lot of thought and my, what I find we do at this commission level and in the city is that we have these grandiose ideas, but we don't follow through in a timely fashion. And what happened tonight is a, a perfect example where I hope that um, Commissioner Maroney's comments will be taken to heart and that we will see this bench project come before us sooner than later, that it won't be one more thing that we talk about and then it just gets lost. So there are issues that I would like to, to make public of how important I believe it is that we work together with public works. And tonight was again, an example of what happens when possibly it's how I view it when we don't work on these things together, that things get lost and they don't work out as well as, as I believe they could have because they didn't come across our desk or our dais. And I think that there is, we have a lot to offer. One of my very favorite things to do with all of you is to hear what it is you have to say. 
And I, I've, I've said it many times to each of you personally that you all have amazing talents and I think we work well together, but I don't think we work well together if things don't come before us. And um, when an email is sent out announcing something and that is the way, and that is how the city chooses to let us know that something has happened, I don't believe that usually works very well because we weren't able to discuss it. And I, I, I'm reaching out to city officials to let them know this is how I feel. Um, I would like to remind you all that last February, we discussed with staff that we would like to set up an official meeting with Public Works and it never happened. I think we discussed it. I remember discussing it again, but when things aren't here in the public view, they get lost and we can't do everything by email. So I'm asking the city, I'm asking staff to try and work better with us and public works. My examples of that, again, are the fact that this bathroom project was huge. We can discuss, I can go back and forth and argue over times, dates, what we knew, what we didn't know. But just recently, I found out that we closed the basketball courts on Fridays, which looks like it was a, the thing it needed to happen to make the, the farmer's market work. But we closed a public part of the parks and we didn't know it was gonna happen. If I had known, and, I, and maybe you would have done the same thing, you would have said, well, where are they going to go play? But we didn't do that. So right now, if you don't know, you can go play at Valley Park or you can go play at Edith Broadway Park. But we weren't offered that information. So I, I can give you, you know, we, when was the last time we had an update about the South Park Hill irrigation? That's extraordinarily important. I know we're a small city and that we have this this project that's taken over South Park and a lot of other parks. But I think it's important that we have a checkoff sheet. Every park has its positives and its negatives. I think that, um, who spoke during public comment regarding the park? Mr. Higgins. Mr. Higgins makes a good point. Maybe I need to go down and look and see what it is he's talking about. But we should know the maintenance of our parks. Where are we with how they're being used. Are we overusing the parks? Can Is there something that Public Works can help us with to move the, the, um, the soccer field and move it to the north a bit more so that that part of the park doesn't get used again and again and again? I don't have the answers, but I've never been asked the questions. And that's what I'm asking. I'm, I'm frustrated over the fact that we seem to be a group that approves a lot of different functions, a, a lot of tournaments and, and all that, but I don't see us really making a difference in a timely fashion. And I don't want it to be that way because again, I think I have a lot to offer and I think you all have a lot to offer. So uh, I will, I've reached out to Kelly um, about how we can do this. I, I have reached out to John Cordova of what he can do to let us know what's going on in the parks. Lisa has agreed, um, not agreed, it was Lisa's idea, I should say, to meet with John a week or so before our meetings so that we can understand what's going on. But I'm, I'm really disappointed that I don't feel that we are being used to our ultimate power. So I'm asking you all to give that some thought and to find what's important to you, whether it's a subcommittee or where you are with, with the city benefiting from all of your talents and to help us have a better, a better relationship with the city. And I'm hoping that that can happen in the next couple of months when um, we come back during a really important time in our meetings is right when they when the question is items requested by commissioners. 
we shouldn't have to ask more than once what's going on with that project. And I would like to feel that staff is on the same, um, same page with us. So that being said, does anyone else have anything to say? I just okay. wanted to say thank you, Chair Elman. We hear you, we respect your input, and we will do what we can to um, enhance that line of communication and consider more solutions on our end to um, provide the commission with more of these updates that are continuing to be matters that are brought up during this item. I'll make a running list and we'll be responsive to them. Um, I do see that um, Commissioner Grayson is uh, watching our, our meeting. And I, I just wanted to say that um, I uh, had a conversation with him and um, I'm hoping that he and I can work together and um, watch each other's um, meetings as much as we can, but, but more importantly, check out the, um, the agendas and see how we cross over. So thank you very much. So if anyone else has nothing to say, I will adjourn this Parks and Rec meeting to Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Hi, everyone. Good night.